Okay, so now, uh, like I said, I took uh, epoxy and I just dripped it in there and filled that cone up, uh, filled the tip up, up to here. And I removed the paper and cut away some of the excess uh, epoxy. And then I filled in the slats as well. Now, uh, I'm going to show you how I fill in one here. I've got one left to do. I've got some duct tape I put in there and just covered the slat that I'm working with. That seems, that's this one. And I just mix some five minute epoxy. I like five minute epoxy for this uh, nose, for the nose cone because, uh, like I said, it's, it's five minute epoxy. So after just a few minutes, uh, I can start working on another slat. So it doesn't take long at all, actually, to uh, form this nose cone and uh, make it workable. So I'm going to mix the epoxy here. And what you see me doing is just filling in that, that slat right there. Get that epoxy in there. And, uh, you gotta work pretty fast with the five minute stuff. Let's get it all filled in there. Try to make sure there's no air pockets in there. Let's fill it in good. Brush it in there. I used to fill it in, fill the slats in from the the inside, and I'd put the tape on the outside. But what I found was sometimes you just couldn't get the tape on there uniform, and the glue could be a lot higher than the slat, or a lot lower, or the tape didn't go on uh, perfectly right, and you got crumples. Where with this, I find you know how the epoxy just sort of sets itself in there. I find it almost fills that slat just nice and even. So I got the excess flowing over the sides, and that's okay. Just thin it out a bit. So it doesn't really matter if you overflow that slat a little bit, because it's going to sort of pour itself out. I look at it and just fill in the sides. Make sure it does overflow the sides. So what we're going to do later is uh, I like to make my noses uh, pretty detailed in the sense that I, I will actually sand it up real good. But then I look at it, I hold it up to the light. I look at it and see if you know is there any place that needs to be filled in. It's not going to be perfect, but actually this looks almost perfect as far as filling it in. As far as the smoothness of it as well. I think I need some on the tip there. But yeah, anyway, oh, I see a little dimple there where it's lacking a little epoxy. You can see it right there. Check that again. Now, and as I look at it, uh, it's looking pretty good. A little drip there. A little drip down. Actually, that looks real good. It looks like everything's filled in. So we'll just uh, let that harden up in a few minutes, let stuff flow a little bit. And actually, right now, that's, that's launchable. It may not look that great, it's not that smooth, but it's very workable. Uh, I'll show you some of the other nose cones I've done where I've actually hand sanded them. It's taken some time using uh, paint, primer, sand. But I think what I'm going to invest in is an Orbital sander. They're only about $30, $40, and you should be able to smooth that out real quick. Uh, I like a good-looking nose cone, but like I have said, that's uh, very workable. If I don't want to paint this nose, I just launch it like that. But if I do want to paint it, then I'll just put a little more detailed time into it and get it looking really smooth. Okay, so here's the uh, nose cone. You can look down on that and see that... Uh, 
It doesn't look bad. I mean, it looks worse if you look real close. So everything's not really that smooth. But uh, very workable. You could launch that right now. Tip's very strong. It's filled in with epoxy. And the nose itself is very strong. Very solid. So now to complete the nose, to complete the shoulder, what I've done is I've cut out a, another piece of PVC as a coupler. And that's going to get uh, slid up there. It's going to be glued in place with the PVC solvent. And then what I did is I took a piece of uh, cardboard to so put inside here as well so that the, uh, the shoulder, the end, has a place to butt up against. And this is going to get glued in there. You can see I have the eyelet there to, to put your shroud, your parachute and uh, shock cord and things like that. And that's just going to get slid up in there. And I'll probably have it go in just a, a little deep so that I can even reinforce it with epoxy or super glue in here, here as well. So that's what it's going to look like when the shoulder's done. And that's going to be the nose cone that goes on the airframe. So, uh, you know, it doesn't take but a couple hours work. The only investment in it is the uh, epoxy, which is, for me, about $5 to make a nose cone of that size. And uh, even bigger. So, uh, just to show you some other nose cones I've worked on, uh, where I've hand sanded them. This one uh, that I made for a smaller airframe. It's made out of this same tube right here. Same concept. And... Uh, there's a nose right there. Got another one here I showed in videos in the past. Same concept, smoothed it out real good. Uh, sounds like plastic when you hit. But, uh, also from the same cardboard material. <laughs> Very sharp. Rather nice nose cone, if I may say. And here's one for uh, an inch and a half airframe. And that's uh, PVC. I can use that for this airframe here just like that and that one doesn't look too bad either very sharp very dangerous so uh, that's the nose cone and the airframe